Well, good morning and welcome to our service. The service this morning is a morning prayer from the Book of Alternative Services, the Green Book. You'll find a link near this uh, to, the, uh, if you, to the book online if you would like to have it. Um, and we will try to remember to give page numbers as often as possible. I'm delighted that you could join us and uh, looking forward to it. Last week, those of you who watched the service might know that uh, we had spliced in some music, but this time we're very fortunate to have Bob live. We are standing six feet away. We're trying to be good about the social distancing. There's Bob. And uh, we'll start off with singing number 69 of the Hymns of Praise. When we walk in the Thank you for that, Bob. And there'll be a couple more songs coming up as we go through our service. 
Uh, we begin with the opening responsory in the green books, the books of alternative services, on page 97. Opening responsory number four. Cast your burden upon the Lord. And he will sustain you. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again. And sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Blessed be the Lord day by day. The God of our salvation who bears our burdens. And we continue with the penitential rite on page 45. <clears throat> Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts and let them return to the Lord, and he will have compassion unto our God, for he will richly pardon. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together the Venite, which you can find on page 49. Page 49 of the Green Prayer Books. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his before he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. O come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. O oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. And we continue with our first reading from Ezekiel. A reading from Ezekiel, chapter 37, Reading verses 1 to 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me in by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come up on you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these, state, these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, 
And the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will, put, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> Our appointed psalm for this morning's service is Psalm 130. Psalm 130, found on page 888. We will do it by the part verse. Page 888. Out of the depths have I called you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice, the voice of my, of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to know what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you. Therefore, Therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him. In, In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning. More than, more than watchmen for, for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with, with the, the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plentiness, redemption. And you shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Together we pray. Rescue us, O God, from whom we wait, from the depths of depression and despair. May we trust in your mercy, know the fullness of your redemption, and share in the glory of your kingdom through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our second reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 6 to 11. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. For you are not in the flesh, you are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through the spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. For our gradual song, we're going to do number 61, Burdens Are Lifted at Calvary from the, the praise books. Days are filled with sorrow and care.
gospel reading. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to, to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sister sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, The illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, through Jesus, accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not on them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. 
When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm probably stating the uh, remarkably obvious when I say that that's a hard time for a lot of us. Uh, and there's been a few joking things about uh, all you introverts out there better phone your extroverted friends because they're probably not doing okay. And those of you who know me will know I'm pretty extroverted. So lim having this limited a number of people to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis is a bit of a challenge, but uh, we'll get through this. I did want to though talk about, um, start by talking about an experience that my wife and I had a number of years ago when we were in New Zealand in Christchurch. This was a year or two after the earthquake in Christchurch. You may recall that many people were killed and much of the downtown area was, was destroyed in, in a very big, really two earthquakes several months apart. And the place was still very badly damaged and the cathedral, which is the Christchurch Cathedral, which is really the center of town, was was still kind of a pile of bricks, sort of, and bits missing and so on. It was really quite sobering to be there. <clears throat> but one of the things that really impressed me was a number of signs that had been placed in various spots around town, basically saying, you might be having a bad day sometimes, and that's okay, with some information on mental health contact. And then it had other signs said things like, you might be okay for today, and that's fine too. And it had a variety of ways of recognizing that people's reactions to, to difficult times, particularly difficult times that are extended in, in, in how long they take, well, it varies over time. And I think for a lot of us, that's probably what will happen as this rolls forward. Uh, I don't know any more than you do about how long this will be. I read the newspapers, or no, I don't, I'm showing my age. I, I read the stuff online as much as you do, uh, and I don't really know any more but, than you do, but I know that it's not going to be as fast as any of us would like. Uh, so the first thing I want to say is to repeat what I've said in, in other contexts. Call people. If there's someone that you're not sure about, if you're if you're not sure, I mean, I don't know how they're doing, phone them. Worst comes to worst, they say, you know what, I'm busy now, I'm busy baking or whatever, and don't worry about it, we're fine. But check up on other people, because there's a real opportunity now to, uh, to show people that we care in lots of ways. But lots of us are gonna have days where it's hard, and lots of us are gonna feel cabin fever of various sorts as we stay inside our houses and look out. It's a little easier with it rainy weather for a few days. At least we won't be too tempted to go outside. But uh, having said that, I wanted to come back to the two, uh, the Old Testament reading and the Gospel reading, which is the reading with from Ezekiel with the Valley of the Dry Bones. And, and then the reading, um, quite a long Gospel reading, thanks to Sheila for all that reading. She's working her, she's earning her keep today. But, and then the, the raising of Lazarus. And they're both stories of hope and new life being brought into situations that at least to every appearance were hopeless. Ezekiel is speaking to the people of Israel when they're, they're in Babylon. They've been thrown out of their country. They've had almost everything that mattered to them, everything that they believed God had promised them had been taken away. And Ezekiel's message is, God can work with this. You see a valley of dry bones, and they are very dry, and they are very dead, and God can work with that. Don't despair. And we see with Lazarus, it's a long and, and complicated story in many ways, but but Lazarus is, is dead, and, and, and he says, don't worry, he's sleeping. And the disciples, in their usual form, don't really get the point. They go, oh, well, 
His alarm clock will go off, he'll have a cup of coffee, some toast, he'll be fine. And Jesus says, no, you idiot, he's dead. That's, that's a paraphrase, but that's the basics of what he's saying. And he gets there, and, and he's not so subtly told off by Martha and Mary. If you'd been here, you wouldn't have died. And they say, well, do you believe in the resurrection? And, and they say, well, in a general sense, yes. And he says, no, 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 do you believe in it? And they go, well, whatever, like, yeah, if you say so. And then he goes, and, and you, you, you've heard it just a minute or two ago, calls Lazarus, come forth, and, and Lazarus does. Obviously, most of us aren't going to encounter either of those specific situations. <clears throat> We're not going to have a dead army out in a valley somewhere. Many of us will have people we care for die, sadly, but, but they'll stay dead, at least as far as we, we know on this world. So we have to do a bit of translating into what this might mean, to bring hope into what appears to be a hopeless situation, how to bring hope to us in times when the temptation to despair the temp might be fairly strong. But we have to work on translating that. I'm reminded, and I'm sure I'll get the quote wrong, so I apologize to all the Marlon Brando fans or James Dean fans. I should have even looked that one up. The movie Rebel Without a Cause where they say, what are you rebelling against? And he goes, well, what do you got? I think that kind of is applicable here. God brings hope to hopeless situation. God brings hope to us in times of despair. And what have we got? Well, some of us are feeling trapped. Some of us are bored. Some of us are lonely. Some of us are scared. Some of us are confused. Some of us are, are worried about family members in other places. Some of us are, are worried about family members nearby. Some of us are, have, have people in, in hospitals or seniors' homes that we're, we're unable to visit and we're unsure how they are. What have you got? And the point here is that God will bring hope to that. God will bring cheerfulness, but, but not not instantly. One of the things about this current situation, and I was speaking with someone, a wise person just earlier today, who said, you know, when it's a snowstorm or the power outage, <clears throat> it's difficult, but you know it's going to be a day or two, and, and it'll be done. And we don't know that. We Actually, we're pretty sure on this one it's going to be at least a number of weeks before this is done. We're going to be in some form of, of uh, social distancing or or physical distancing and, and whatever we're calling it at the moment, it's going to continue for some time. Some very, very optimistic, probably foolishly optimistic people seem to think it'll be over by Easter. My hunch is that they're wrong. I would love for them to be right. I think we're into this for the long haul. This is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And some of us are better at sprints than they are at marathons. Some of us aren't particularly good at either. But this is not like a snowstorm or a power outage. This is something that will, will carry us for a long time. And so we need to be able to find the resources emotionally and spiritually and, and frankly things like groceries for a longer period of time. One of the messages I find in, of encouragement in the reading from Ezekiel and from John's Gospel, from the dry bones and, and Lazarus, though, is that God can bring hope when we don't think there's any left to bring. That God's power to bring love and hope and encouragement is as strong as any despair, as anything that the world can throw at us. The world can throw pretty hard sometimes. And, and I'm not pretending that just because we have some faith, this will be easy. It won't be easy for lots of us. But God will be there. And if we remember that, if we keep our prayers going, if we're honest with the people around us and, and phone someone or ask for prayers when we're running out ourselves, we can do this. If Ezekiel can call forth an army from a pile of dry bones, if Jesus can call Lazarus forth, 
from, from, from the grave, then we can get through a couple weeks of watching Netflix and eating storm chips. So, for that hope in the midst of hopelessness, for the opportunity for joy amid despair, and for the people around us who hold us up in prayer, who we may find it difficult to do ourselves, I give God thanks. Amen. We say the creed together, the words for the Apostles' Creed, which you'll find on page 52 of the Green Books, the Books of Alternative Services. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We move to our time of prayer. Uh, let us pray. For our prayers today, we will be using the occasional prayers found on page 676. I will be using select. I will be selecting certain prayers, and I will begin with number two, the mission of the church. In our dry diocesan intercessions this week, we pray for the parish of Cactus Cove in the Kivers the rector, the Reverend Malcolm Palmer, with congregations at Taxes Cove and the Carvers. We also pray for the parish of Deer Lake, the priest in charge, the Reverend Canon Paulette Bogdan, and congregations at Deer Lake and Howley. In our provincial prayer care, we pray for the National Indigenous Bishop and the Anglican Council of Indigenous People and Bishop Mark McDonald. In our Diocese of Central Newfoundland, we pray for John, our Bishop, Terry, our Archdeacon, as they lead and advise their clergy in these troubling times. We also pray for Keith, our priest, as he shepherds his congregation at St. Mary's in Carnival and St. Mary's in Burgoyne's Cove. We pray for all clergy and people. Number two. Draw your church together, O Lord, into one great company of disciples. Together following our Lord Jesus Christ into every walk in life, together serving Him in His mission to the world, and together witnessing to His love on every continent and island, we ask this in the name and for His sake. Amen. We pray for peace on page 677. O oh God, it is your will to hold both heaven and earth in a single peace. Let the design of your great love shine in the waste of our rocks and souls, and give peace to your church, peace in our nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for number nine. We'll be adding certain things to some of these prayers as well. For the royal family, Almighty God, the family of all goodness, bless we pray our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and all the royal family. Especially we pray for the restored health to Prince Charles. Endue the family with Holy Spirit. Enrich them with your heavenly grace. Prosper them with all happiness and bring them to an everlasting kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for the nation. Number 10. Almighty God, you have given us this good land as our heritage. 
May we prove ourselves a people mindful of your generosity and glad to do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, truthful education, and a honorable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil course of action. At this time, we pray that the people will follow the rules set in place to those who are trying to protect and save us from being infected with the coronavirus. Make us, who came from many nations with many different languages, a united people. Defend our liberties and give those whom we have entrusted with the authority of the government the spirit of wisdom, that there may be justice and peace in our land. When times are prosperous, let our hearts be thankful. And in our troubled times, such as now, do not let our trust in you fail. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for those in affliction and for those in mental distress. Page 2682, numbers 26 and 27. <coughs> Almighty and everlasting God, the comfort of the sad and the strength of those who suffer, hear the prayers of your people who are in trouble, remembering those in hospitals and all who are in isolation at this time. Grant to everyone in distress mercy, relief, and refreshment through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, have mercy on all your children who live in mental distress. We pray for the many who are feeling isolated and alone. Restore them to strength of mind and cheerfulness of spirit, and give them health and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious and loving God, we ask your mercy on all who are suffering from this dreaded virus worldwide. Be with those who are on the front lines. Give them the strength and courage to our souls in need. We pray for wisdom for all who, have, who make decisions and the will of the people to do all that is necessary to protect themselves and others. We pray for those who are unwell with other ailments and require medical attention. We may pray now in the privacy of your own, those who are heavy on your heart. And we pray for those on our own sick list. We pray for Daryl, Alonzo, Mitchell, and Myra. Calm all our fears and protect us from harm, and help us take comfort in your great, in you, our great physician, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us pray the second general thanksgiving on page 129. <clears throat> page 129. together. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us tasks which demand our best efforts and leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation for his dying through which he overcame death, for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit, that we may know Christ and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. We pray the colleague for the fifth Sunday in Lent. It's found on page 293. A colleague for the fifth Sunday in Lent. Two, nine, three. Together. 
Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us with the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ, and serve you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And there is our Savior's tell us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn is number 107, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus, all of our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry, everything to God in prayer. online so I'm very glad you're able to join us today and we'll close with the grace in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore amen God bless stay safe and stay home amen